Hello guys, my name is Eric Van Wilderman, and welcome to a Q&A session with yours truly. So I've received a bunch of questions over the course of three or four weeks, however long it's been since I did my 10,000 subscriber video. Uh, it's kind of crazy, we're almost at 15,000 already, that blows my mind. But anyways, uh, yeah, I've received a bunch of questions because I did promise you a Q&A session, and so I really hope during this Q&A session I can answer a lot of the questions that you guys have had about my life, are just about what I do on YouTube, the plans for the channel, and stuff like that. So I hope I can clear a lot of it up, because I get asked a lot of these questions in the comments section a lot, so now I can just direct them to this video! Woohoo! Anyways, um, I received about 27 questions, uh, but well, about 27 different sets of questions, because some people asked a bunch of questions, and some people just asked one. So from 27 different people, I have received them. Now, at the same time, I might have received some questions that slipped through the cracks that I didn't notice. I think I did a pretty good job of answering them all, but at the same time, I might have missed a couple. But I really hope that if I, even if I missed one or two, there's like some similar questions that were asked, because some of them were a little similar. There were a lot of different ones, though, at the same time. So I really hope if your question doesn't make it in, there's something in there that suits your needs, I guess, for lack of a better word. Uh, anyways, uh, let's just get started, alright? So there's a lot of questions to get through, so I'm gonna be as concise as possible. So, question number one, what will you be looking forward to most on your channel, development-wise? Um, for me, I just really hope to expand the channel, that's all. I hope to be doing more stuff about the channel, uh, like I said, I want to start doing triple A game live stream marathons because for me, I'm not going to be playing many triple A games on the channel, with the exception of Fatal Frame 5. But I might play some triple A games, like some one shot videos, you know, something fun. But I'm not going to be doing like full on let's plays of them anymore because they just, there's so many people doing let's plays of those big triple A games that it's just really hard to get noticed. And I, I hate to say that I just do this for views. Um, I don't do it just for views, it's just hopping on, doing something that's everyone's doing. It just feels a little strange to me. Like, for example, it's October and so I want to play a lot of horror games, and I will be playing a lot of horror games, but I just don't really feel an urge to play Alien Isolation or The Evil Within. I will, however, be probably live streaming, live streaming an entire marathon session of The Evil Within next weekend. So you can look forward to that, I'm going to be doing like a 15 hour just from start to finish, and when I do live stream, I'm gonna try to, there's a feature on Twitch where you can record your gaming session, and I'm gonna like, record that gaming session and then upload that to YouTube, so we'll upload like a playthrough of it, but it's gonna be like a full like, unedited version of it that you can still check out. But anyways, um, so that's in regards to AAA games, in, in terms of uh, development, it's, when I get bigger, I want to start like a merchandise line that I might just donate all the money to charity, um, do something like that, uh, you know, sell like Bensons and some t-shirts and stuff. I might also do, well, I'm going to be doing more charity live streams in the future. I also want to do more collabs with people that, you know, some other bigger YouTubers, not like huge. I mean, I couldn't like call up Markiplier and be like, Markiplier, hey man, just do, do a video, and that wouldn't work. <laughs> I'm not big enough yet. I'm off, I'm off the radar. I'm still a tiny blip on the radar in the grand scheme of YouTube. And, you know, I'm working on improving that, though. Uh, but at the same time, it's hard work because I do have a full-time job. So, yeah, those, those are some of the things. Just uh, collabs, uh, charity, more live streaming and stuff like that. And continuing what I'm doing. So, I hope that answers your question. Question number two. <laughs> Why you so thug? Well, you know what? I didn't choose the thug life. The thug life chose me. Question number three. Which of the Fatal Frame games would you the most want to be stuck in as the protagonist, and why? That's kind of an easy one, actually. Uh, in Fatal Frame 1, 2, and 4, you're mostly alone. You know, sometimes you have moments where there's another character with you, but you're mostly alone in those games. So, in Fatal Frame 3... Jeez, someone was whistling outside, stupid annoying people. Anyways, in Fatal Frame 3, uh, you're in an apartment and you go to the manor of sleep in your dreams and so Rei and Miku are together and they don't really they communicate somewhat but they don't really tell each other like oh at night time I go to the manor of sleep they don't really say that to each other but I think if I was in that situation I would open up a lot more I'd be like hey Miku I had this crazy dream last night and I went to the manor of sleep oh my god me too and then we'd like solve the mystery together better and it would be awesome but instead, they wait until Kay comes and, you know, by then it's like, they're really late and they're really into, like, the depths of despair with their dreams. But I wouldn't have let it get to that point. Or maybe maybe I would have. 
Who knows? But either way, I think uh, Fatal Frame 3, I would have just the sense of camaraderie between the people, uh, the main characters, just seems like it would suit me better and my chances of surviving. <laughs> Question number four. Do you think you will ever give your subscribers a name? Mm, you know what? I used to call people the Wildermen on my channel. Like, hey, subscribe, become a Wilderman. Men, man. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, I don't know how I really feel about that. I just, I kind of like the idea of you guys just being people that are watching instead of like objectifying you, if that makes any sense. But uh, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think of like some things I would even call you guys. Maybe something that's really close to me because I, I hold you guys in high regard. Something that's close to me, close to me. Chest hair is the thing that's the most close to me. So I could say... Hello, my little chest hairs, and welcome to the Crooked Man. My fingernails. Hello, my little fingernails, and welcome to the Crooked Man. You know what? Maybe something friendly. You know, when I was young, I really thought Ronald McDonald was friendly. So I could say, hello, my little Ronald McDonalds, and welcome to the Crooked Man. I don't know. What do you guys think? Question number five is a multi-question question thing thingamajig so let's get down to business i think i can answer these really quick though what is your favorite chocolate i don't know it's hard to say i used to like uh the cadbury the milk eggs like the big ones what are they called again they had a special name like uh damn it they were big and they had uh they were delicious anyways that was awesome i like that i also like a toblerone toblerone's good have you ever seen the replacements it's an awesome show uh you know what i've heard the name and i'm not sure if i've seen it and if i'm not sure if i've seen it, i probably haven't seen it I'll put it on my list of things to do. Number three, can you adopt me? Well, you know what? If I adopt you, you got to do all the cooking and cleaning in my home. And then I will adopt you. Because that would shave a lot of time off the things that I have to do. Because I live all by myself. Please, come on. And you can sleep on my sofa. I have two rooms now. Last year, I only had one room. I have improved my life. <laughs> and number four, mogege. Mogege? All right. Question number six. Is Benson in a relationship? If not, I would really like to meet him and his butthole in real life. If you know what I mean. <laughs> Alright. Well, you know what? Benson is never in a relationship. He makes girls think he's in a relationship. And he has, like, so many girlfriends. And I'm not too sure about boyfriends because if you met his butthole, you might get your dick, like, sliced off as you tried to insert it in there. Because he might, he might actually try to entice you into doing it. He'd be like, hello there, come on, just, just a little bit, yeah. And then, boom, he'd, like, cut off your dick. Be careful. Question number seven. If you get to be in any horror game, what would it be? Okay, well, this is similar to the Fatal Frame one. And if I was in any horror game, what horror game would I want to be in? Oh, God, that's a really hard question because there are so many horror games that I would not want to be inside. Definitely wouldn't want to be in Alien Isolation because you're in space. There's no escape. Definitely wouldn't want to be in Silent Hill because Silent Hill, the town manifests itself judging by your psyche, and let's just say, uh, sometimes I think the weirdest shit, so <laughs> I wouldn't want to be in Silent Hill. Maybe Fatal Frame, because Fatal Frame isn't about you, it's more about your environment that you're in. Probably Fatal Frame, and then going by that Fatal Frame 3, the manner of sleep, of course, I could survive that shit. I think I could truly survive that shit. That's the horror game I'd choose, because I wouldn't want to, and <laughs> staying in Corpse Party, definitely not. No. <laughs> That would suck. Dying of craziness and hunger and thirst. Ugh. Question number eight. This is another multi-question one. What is your favorite horror game? That's a hard question. I like horror games for different reasons. I love the Fatal Frame series. I love Fatal Frame 3. Fatal Frame 3 is one of my favorite horror games. I also love Silent Hill. I love Silent Hill for The Room. I know it's not one of the most highest rated games because they're like, Oh, well, the main character is bland and it's not about him and how the town manifests itself but i was like oh this whole story is cool and the whole atmosphere is great i loved silent hill for it freaked the shit out of me when i played it Ugh. other things um um that da, 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 da. okay well let's just go with that let's go with silent hill 4 fatal frame 3 for like the triple a ones i'm trying to think and corpse party was great i love a lot of the rpg horror games for their stories um, but it's hard to pinpoint, like, what's my favorite? Because there, there, there's a lot of different things about horror that I like. Anyways, number two, what is your favorite horror movie? Crap, that's... <laughs> that's hard! Ah, 
You know, there's real. There's one with Bradley Cooper. He's the guy from The Hangover. The guy from The Hangover. He was from Alias way back in the day. I watched Alias. Anyways, so uh, he did a movie called The Midnight Meat Train, and that was awesome. It was like horror, but it was really cool and it was badass. In terms of like actual creep factor, though. In terms of actual creep factor, though, um, one of the recent ones I watched was I liked the remake of Evil Dead, much to. I don't know, a lot of other people didn't like it, but I thought the remake to Evil Dead was really cool. Question number three of eight. Question eight, three, if that makes any sense. Would you rather be locked in a room with Mogeko, Sai, or Sachiko? Holy crap, that is hard. Well, you know what? Giving this some thought right now, I cross Sai off the list because there's no way for me to fight back. If I have no camera obscura, not Sai. Definitely not. She's good. No, no, no. Definitely not. I would die. Sachiko? No, because she's supernatural too. Not Sachiko, definitely not, she would kill me. But you know what, Mogeko isn't really supernatural. So, I think me being a big guy, and I consider myself fairly strong, I would have a fighting chance with Mogeko. And you know, even if she tortured me, there'd be a chance I could escape. I think with Sai or Sachiko, I would die, like, within, like, half an hour. <laughs> so, I'm gonna go with Mogeko. You get to spend some time with me. Congratulations. Question number nine. What do you consider your favorite games, and what are your favorite game genres? Well, that's crazy, <laughs> because I love a lot of kinds of games. I play almost every kind of game. I play racing, horror, adventure, RPG, action, platformer, first person. There's so many games that I play. I mostly play horror on the channel, though, because I find I can do good commentary to horror games, and I find it entertains people a lot. And so I really, I just, and I love the horror genre too. I mean, it's hard to say what my favorite genre is, but I love the horror genre because it is really, it's fun to do. And I love being scared, kind of, I love the thrill of things, you know, like I went paragliding and that was fun. I want to go bungee jumping and stuff like that. So yeah, um, I love horror, but I love all kinds of genres of games. And uh, I guess some of my favorite games from the past I don't know if I'll mention any newer ones, but some of my favorite games are like the Devil May Cry series, Okami is awesome, the Final Fantasy series, uh, Xenogears was one of my, one, probably my favorite game of all time, uh, the Xenosaga series, a lot of JRPGs I've played that I really love, that I really hold dear to me, uh, new games, like I've been playing a lot of visual novels, Virtues, Last Reward, 999, I'm playing Danganronpa 2, I played the original Danganronpa, it's awesome, uh, geez, there's so many, the Fatal Frame series, Oof. Just, just too many? Chrono Trigger, of course. Final Fantasy VI going way back. I've played games for a long time. I've played games since the NES days, so it's a hard question, but those are some of my faves. Question number 10. Hey Eric, I know you like I know you like your outro, but I was wondering if you have plans of changing it in the near future. By the way, I like your outro. It makes me think I'm in another country. Yes, there's cherry blossoms, so it reminds people of like Korea and Japan. Um, so uh, as for changing my outro, I, I've actually thought about it at times, but then again, I just, I really like the way the outro is right now. But I might actually go and change it sometime in the future. And by sometime in the future, maybe a few months down the line, for now, I'm okay with it. Maybe as I get bigger, I'll change it to something else. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I like it the way it is. But I might keep the song, keep the cherry blossoms, and just edit to, to have more things like pop out at you or something like that. But that's about it. Question 11. Has your girlfriend ever seen you without your beanie? I have some bad news for you. If you see me without my beanie, it could be very well the last thing that you're ever going to see in your entire life. Question number 12. What made you start a gaming account? And are you going to start branching out with other YouTubers? What made me start a gaming account? Well, I have always liked it when people watch me play games. I've always made it entertaining. When I was really young, actually, a lot of people, like when Resident Evil 1 and Resident Evil 2 came out, there were people on the same block, friends of mine, that would come over and just watch me play it. Because they were interested in the stories, they were interested in the horror, but they weren't as good as me at games, and also they, they would freak out while they played them. So they would actually just come on over and be like, hey... We want to watch you play games. And it's just been something that has happened in my life before. I've, I've had ex-girlfriends that I've played games with or have that have wanted me watch me play like story games like Heavy Rain and stuff. And, you know, it's just something that's always been a part of me. And so part that's 50% of it. And then the other 50% was I was on YouTube one day and I was like, there's, there's people that actually do this. And that like drove me, that inspired me to be like, well, 
I want to do that. I've been doing that for like my whole life. That sounds great. And so I started doing that. So 50% of it was uh, because I was already doing it in the past with people. And the other 50% was I realized that it was possible for me to actually do that with the right equipment on YouTube. And so I started. And that's why I started a gaming account. Um, am I going to start branching out with other YouTubers? Well, you know what? I just might, right? But I got to get a little bit bigger to reach out to some of the ones, some of the more well-known ones. I'll have to wait till I get a little bit bigger. But um, I might branch out with some that are in the similar uh, sub range as I am. But at the same time, I, I hate to just reach out just for the sake of reaching out. I want to like like the other person at the same time. Like, uh, there's a few people I have on my sidebar that I love making videos with. Uh, Bratman, uh, SO Hellkite, and uh, Swingpoint, me and him made a video a long time ago. I might reach out to him again and talk to him about making a video, but uh, the time difference is really hard for us, so it's really difficult for us to find a good time to meet. Uh, but he's he's a really good YouTuber, and uh, but I don't know, as for others, I, I really should reach out, but like I said, being in Korea, it's really hard to reach out, so. Question number 13 has a lot of questions. I'm gonna do my best to answer them very concisely. What is your favorite movie? Uh, so I got asked what was my favorite horror movie. For me, my favorite movie, it could very well be uh, Samurai X Trust and Betrayal. It's the Roroni Kenshin movie that happens before the series. I really love that movie. Seijiro Hiko, he's like uh, Kenshin's master. The whole beginning soliloquy bit he gives is like, yeah, it's so awesome and so cool. And I love it so much. So I'm going to say that. There's a lot of good movies, but I'm going to say that's my favorite movie. Uh, next one. What is your favorite movie directed by Stanley Kubrick? Uh, you know what? For me, I haven't seen a whole lot of Stanley Kubrick, but, uh, Clockwork Orange was really good, but it was super messed up, so I'll just go with that. Uh, I haven't seen 2001 A Space Odyssey. I own it, yet I haven't watched it. It's kind of weird. I should watch it. Next. What's your favorite band? For me, it's the Beastie Boys. Jeez, what is my favorite band? You know what? Favorite band? I'm gonna go with one that I liked in the past, because right now I don't really have a favorite band, but I liked Our Lady Peace. It's a Canadian band. They were really good. I loved them uh, when I was younger, so let's just go with Our Lady Peace. Next question. What's your favorite anime? I... that's... that's really hard to... I'm just gonna name a few that are, like, up there in my top list. I love, uh, Cowboy Bebop, Samurai Champloo, Steins Gate, Code Gus, Code Geese, Code Gus, uh, Gurren Lagann, uh, I'm sure I missed some. A Samurai X Trust and Betrayal. It's a movie, though. It's not like an anime series. Jeez, uh, that's, that's hard, too. Anyways, but those are some of my favorites. I probably missed a few. Okay, next. Who's your? What's your favorite DBZ character? My favorite DBZ character is Piccolo. Because Piccolo's awesome, and he's super cool. I wish he was stronger than he is, but he does get pretty strong, you know? In the Cell Saga, he gets pretty strong when he merges with um, what's, oh Jesus, what's his name? <laughs> his other half that ends, he ends up splitting from in the original series. Okay, whatever, I forget. <laughs> okay, anyways, next. What would you do if I saw you in real life and I yelled, Hey, Eric Van Sexy Buns, I would probably pull down my pants. Not like my underwear, but my pants. And you could take a look. Next. What's your favorite kaiju? I don't really have a favorite kaiju because I, I don't really uh, keep up on that kind of thing. But I did like Mothra. Mothra is pretty cool. Next, I know you have not played a lot, but what is your favorite Monster Hunter monster? I can't answer that. I haven't played enough of Monster Hunter. I don't know the series well enough. Okay, anyways. Um, also, for a bonus, I dare you to pronounce my name correctly in the video. Uh, Ajay Chakraborty. Probably wrong. <laughs> okay, we're on next question, question number 14. Because question 13 was a set, it was a series of questions, but now we're on the next big question. What made you move to South Korea? Um, uh, you know what? I didn't really know much about South Korea before I moved here. I was living in Vancouver. Vancouver is a very expensive city, and I was living there, and I had my degree in marketing that I got in university, and I wasn't using it. I was working at a restaurant just scraping by. It was a really kind of hard life, and I was looking at what I can do. What could I do outside of what I was doing? And I was looking at different jobs and they're like, oh, we need foreign teachers overseas. And when I was in university, I studied Japanese and I knew that there were foreign uh, teaching jobs that you could get. And I'd always wanted to do that. So I figured now is a good time. I'm at a good point in my life when I'm going to do that. And I was looking at countries and Japan 
to get a job in Japan, you need to wait a long time. Like, uh, to get a good job in Japan with the JET program, you need to, it takes like a 10 month process. With the EPIC program in Korea, it was more like a three month process, and that was something I was more willing to do. And so I decided, sure, why not? I heard South Korea was a really good place for saving money and whatnot. So I originally went over there just to save a few bucks, but ended up falling in love with the country and staying here up until now. And, uh, well, here I am, like, almost five years later. So, <laughs> yeah, I, that's the story of how I came here. Question number 15. What is your favorite YouTubers? Um, well, you know, uh, as for gaming YouTubers, I really like Markiplier uh, sometimes. <laughs> I think Markiplier does a really good job. Uh, you know, I like PewDiePie. A lot of people go against the flow and they say they don't like PewDiePie. But at the same time... Uh, a lot of his stuff I like, and there, there's obviously a lot of his stuff I don't like, and sometimes he's annoying, but at the same time, like, overall, he's, like, a really, he's a good guy. If you've watched any of his podcasts, he's good. So I started, I started watching YouTubers uh, through PewDiePie, like, gaming YouTubers. So PewDiePie, Markiplier, Game Grumps are pretty hilarious, uh, especially when JonTron was there. As for YouTubers that aren't just Let's Playing, uh, JonTron, I love JonTron, I watch Angry Joe Show, um... Some other YouTubers outside of gaming, I watch Vsauce. I love science and reading science articles. Like, all the Vsauce channels are great. The Game Theorists is great. Game Theorists, yeah, that's what they're called, the Game Theorists. They do a fantastic job. And I also watch some funny stuff like a Prank vs. Prank. Uh, and, uh, oh, what's his name again? Jeez, there's some YouTubers that I just can't remember their name. Anyways, but uh, some stuff like that. Some funny channels. But, yeah, those are mostly the ones I watch. I'm trying to think of some other, like, gaming YouTubers that I actually watch, though. Uh, Cinnamon Toast Ken, I watch sometimes. I like Cinnamon Toast Ken. Uh, that's it. <laughs> okay, next question. What is your favorite music example, rock or pop or jazz or metal? Well, for me, I love classical and I love uh, electronica. Those are my main listen to songs. But I also like some pop too, since moving to Asia. I didn't like pop. I didn't like Western pop very much, but I love K-pop and J-pop. I was a big fan of Ayumi Hamasaki way back in the day, and I, list, I had like all her albums. Still do, somewhere. And uh, so I love J-pop and K-pop. It's great. I don't know what it is. It's, there's something different about it than there is about Western pop. It's hard to put my finger on, but I just, I like it more. So, yeah. But I don't listen to it as much as classical or electronica. I love, like, classical video game music, like Nobuo Uematsu and stuff like that. And even from, like, newer games, like, I recently played a game called Atelier Aisha, and the music in that is fantastic. The Xenoblade Chronicles music is fantastic. Just all kinds of, like, game classical and real classical, too. Because I used to play classical music. I used to play a tenor saxophone in a classical band. Uh, so it's always been close to me. Next question. Question 17. Do you like waffles? I actually don't like waffles or pancakes that much. Call me crazy, but I don't eat them very frequently. And there's just something about them I don't like. But I do sometimes eat them. Sometimes I get in this mood where I go to like a cafe shop and I have like a coffee and some waffles. And it's good, you know, but I need to be in a very specific mood. I don't eat them often. Question number 18. Aside YouTube, do you have another job? I wish YouTube was my job. It doesn't pay me nearly enough. I think I've put more money into the channel than I've gotten out of the channel. So pretty much all the money I get, I just put it back into like either the games I'm playing or uh, equipment because I have like a Haupog HD PVR 1 and 2. And uh, I bought this gaming laptop just for YouTube, bought a webcam, this light that's shining on my face. A mon another monitor here, and so much stuff just for YouTube, and I put more money into it than I've gotten out of it. So yes, I have another job. I'm an English teacher in South Korea. I mentioned that in one of the previous comments. Someone asked me why I moved to Korea. So yes, that is my job, full-time job. I teach elementary school students grades 3 through 6. I do that during the day, and after that I usually go exercise, and then I come home and make YouTube videos. And if I have a spare hour or two, maybe I'll study Korean or just play a game to relax, like for my own gaming. That's about it. Question number 19. What scares you in real life? Well, this is this is a good question. It's really crazy, but it's good. I have a lot of weird fears, okay? Now, I often... I used to, these days not so much, but I often used to have a really hard time going to sleep because I would think, what happens after we die? Is it just black? Or are we not even conscious? Is it just gone? Like, or what, you know? And, you know, I used to be afraid of that. I'm not really afraid of that anymore. It's like, well, everyone has to go through it. 
Uh, I'm kind of agnostic in the sense where maybe there's something else after death, maybe there isn't, and I don't really know. So uh, that doesn't scare me as much anymore as I'm getting older. Uh, getting buried alive, that's, wow, that frightens the heck out of me. Just the idea of being buried alive. Ugh. Um, also, another thing that scares me is one time when I was drinking, I blacked out. I got, like, super drunk, and I don't remember what happened. And then I woke up, and I had, like, some scratches on myself and stuff, and i just fallen over everywhere. And the the idea of me being conscious but blacked out and not remembering anything, that terrifies me a lot, ever since that one moment. So, yeah, that terrifies me. Like, a, a more, like, down-to-earth fear, you know, something that could possibly happen, that is. Um, another than that, maybe drowning. Drowning always scared the shit out of me, too. But yeah, those are my fears. I don't really have fears of like animals or snakes or anything. I mean, they're icky. I find them like gross, but I'm not really scared of them, so. Question number 20. This one is another set of questions. There are four questions here. How did you end up in Korea? I actually answered that previously, so please refer back to one of the questions I did. Number two, didn't you say you were a teacher? Tell us a bit about what you teach and maybe some fun stories about your career. Uh, yes, I am a teacher. I've mentioned that. And a fun story as well. I teach elementary students, and let's just say that teaching elementary students, I do often have to use Korean in class, because if I just used English, they would have no idea what I'm saying. Depends on their level. If it's like a high-level class, I use more English, but if it's a low-level class, I have to use some Korean. And so, uh, a funny story is, sometimes when I pronounce the names, well, these days I'm alright, but when I was pronouncing the names, I was pronouncing them a little bit wrong. So in one class, I was pronouncing a name, and the name is the name was like Changnyan, Changnyan or something like that. And I was pronouncing it Changnya. I forgot the N sound on the end, and that basically means prostitute. So I was basically just sitting in class like Changnya, hey prostitute, 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 and everyone was just laughing. And I was like, why are you laughing at me? My co-teacher was like, Eric, oh, <gasps> it's like oh my god. So you know, there's been a couple moments where I've said something that has meant something that's really hilarious in Korean that I wasn't really aware of, and all the students just burst out laughing. So, yeah, uh, saying prostitute in the middle of a bunch of elementary school students who probably just learned that word on the internet and are like, oh my god, teacher said prostitute, <laughs> right? Right? <Are you there? laughs> yeah, that's been some awkward moments for sure, mispronouncing things. Uh, anyways, next question here is a lot of YTs have an address. Where fans and items do you have one? Now, I don't have a P.O. box. I should make one. Uh, as for an address, if you send me a message or you leave a comment, I prefer you send me a message on Twitter or Facebook because then it's in a message format. In YouTube, we can send messages, but a lot of people don't know how to use the messaging feature on YouTube. So, yeah, um, if you send me a message through there, then I will give you my address and you can send it to me directly. Uh, next, where can I find the info for your Twitch account? If you look on my YouTube page, at the top, there's a little Twitch symbol next to like a Facebook and Twitter symbol. And if you click on that, it goes right to my Twitch account. So check that out. Question 21. Will Benson ever stop being an asshole to you? No, Benson will never stop being an asshole to me. Nor will I stop being an asshole to him. <laughs> Question 22. Can I ask you how you find some of the games you decide to play? Are they primarily from user suggestions? Well, you know what? Some of them I do take from user suggestions. Sometimes a lot of people will suggest a game that I've already been thinking about playing, but, you know, at the time, so many people are suggesting that I play it, that I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'll go ahead and play it. And a lot of times, too, I just, I find the games on my own, and I go, okay, well, I'm going to play this, or there's, like, some new up-and-coming horror games that are coming out. I try to keep track of the news in that regards, and then I'll play them as they come out. As for, like, the RPG horror games, I'm actually just quite well aware of, like, a lot of the RPG horror games that are out there. Uh, I've seen, like, huge lists of different games that are, and I have my... I am keeping tabs on a lot of them. Some of the ones that we'll be releasing soon, like, I hope I can get some RPG horror games that are brand new, that look pretty cool. And so, yeah, I just... I find games from everywhere, you know? Sometimes the hard part about doing this YouTube thing is finding, like, the right game to play. And that can be hard, but at the same time, a lot of people stay on the channel, you know to see me but you know those are the subscribers and i'm walking a fine balance between playing games that attract new viewers but also uh the subscribers like too the fans of the channel right now like so i walk a fine line between that and so i choose my games accordingly depending on that um and some games i just choose randomly i'm like ah fuck it random game and i'm like here you go i've been thinking about this maybe but i'm just gonna go ahead and do it like the impossible game series that it was completely random galgun stuff like that 
Uh, anyways, so I, I hope that answers your question. Question 23. What's your favorite Korean food? Well, that's a hard question too. I love Korean barbecue, like samgyeopsal is what we say here. Uh, but I don't like samgyeopsal, not so much. Samgyeopsal has a lot of fat in it. I like galmegisal. It's like, like samgyeopsal, it's a different cut of the meat from a pig and it has no fat in it. I really like that. I love samgyetang, which is like a chicken soup, chicken and ginseng mixed together. Mm, but I love chicken. I just love eating chicken, so that's why. Uh, some other favorite Korean food. What is super delicious here? I'm gonna go with bulgogi. Bulgogi is really good. It's like uh, thin strips of beef that are mixed with some vegetables, usually uh, mushrooms and onion, and that's a pretty delicious meal. I like that. So like, uh, we'll say bulgogi, samgyetang, and cream barbecue, samgyeopsal. Those are definitely my favorites. Question 24. When you started your channel, did you ever think that it would come to be how it is now? Well, you know what? When I started my channel, I was just doing it for fun, really, just as something to do on the side. And uh, I did it to kind of organize my life a little bit, because at that time I was just playing games indiscriminately, just at home, uh, getting trophies and whatnot. And I was starting to lose its appeal, and I wanted to reignite my passion for gaming. And so I just started doing it, and it hit a point eventually when I started doing like uh, my Fatal Frame Let's Plays and stuff like that, and some horror Let's Plays, and people were like, wow, Eric, you have potential to... Uh, be something bigger than you are and at that point it kind of clicked that that was around like a thousand subscribers around then it clicked that I have the potential to make something bigger than it is and so ever since then I've just been working hard on it and hoping that people have liked the content and uh, yeah it's just progressively been getting bigger and bigger a uh, month on month it's been growing and yeah I mean it's a slow plot along compared to a lot of the, the youtubers that got really big really fast but I'm really happy with all the people that I have here. And I personally think that our community, it's a, it's a really great community. We have a lot of great people here. And so uh, even though it's been a bit of a, a slow progress, but I don't really want to say slow because lately it's been crazy. You know, a lot of progress has been being made. Um, but yeah, it's I'm really glad that I have the people that I have here because I have a lot of loyal uh, people that check out the videos a lot and a lot of people that I get to talk to videos uh talk to the videos about in the comments section that I actually enjoy replying to the people, right? So I, I don't know. Um, at one point, it just hit that, you know, I had the potential and, you know, with a bit of luck, maybe it would get bigger and it did. So I'm happy. Question 25. How old are you actually? Well, in Canadian age, I am 28 years old. My birthday just hit, so I was 27 like a few days ago. I'm 28 now, and in Korean age, I'm 29 because Korean age is different. And in Korean age, every New Year's, you get one year older. So this New Year's in Korea, I will be 30. Hey! Question 26. What's your favorite place in South Korea? That's a hard question because it really depends on what I'm looking for. If I'm looking for like something that can only be found in a metropolis like Seoul, then Seoul's would be my favorite place for that, right? Like, uh, there's this musical show called Nanta. It's like a comedy performance. It's really funny. It's really awesome. And if I want something like that, I'll go to Seoul or some symphonies. Like, I saw the Final Fantasy Symphony, Distant Worlds in Seoul, and it was fantastic. And so when it comes to Metropolis things, like, I go there and I love doing that. When it comes to, like, natural beauty, there's an island called Jeju, which is, like, the southern island. It's, like, the Hawaii of Korea. It has a lot of naturally beautiful places. It's a fantastic place to go. Lots of great seafood. I love seafood. Called Hue in Korean. And it's really delicious. And also, uh, Pusan is a metropolis right along the beach. Pusan is it's fantastic. Maybe I would love Pusan the most. But the thing is, these days it's really crowded, so I don't know if I'd want to live there. Uh, some place that's really close to where I live, called uh, Songdi-san, it has this temple um, at the base of the mountain, which is beautiful, and has like one of the world's largest Buddha statues. And uh, you climb up the mountain, if you make it to the top of the mountain three times, not in one go, just three times like over the course of your life or whatever, you can make a wish. And I've been to the top almost six times. It's a really beautiful hike in the fall season when the leaves change color. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, there's another mountain too that I really want to go to that I haven't gone to called Jidisan, which is supposed to be the best mountain when it comes to when the leaves change color. And I should go really soon if I want to go check them out. Uh, maybe next weekend I should go and make a video of it too. So there, there's a few places in Korea that I really like. Uh, in the city that I used to live in, in Chungju, it's a smaller city and I went to the lake there and it was awesome because I go water skiing every weekend. And that was really cool too. There's just so many places I love. It's hard to say what my favorite is. Question 27. 
I heard that there is a Five Nights and Freddy sequel. Are you willing to play that game in the future? And what is your favorite game that you played in the past? Well, Five Nights at Freddy's sequel, as soon as it comes out, I'll be doing it. I'll try to make videos really quickly for you guys. I want to be... If there's a 2020-2020 challenge in that, I want to be one of the first people in the world to do it. And I'm going to work my ass off to get that video out, like, right away. Um, what is your favorite game you played in the past? Well, I mentioned some of my favorite games already previously in the video. So, uh, you have to check out that section. Okay, so the last question is, how did you come about deciding to start a YouTube channel, especially a gaming one with horror as the main focus? Now, I kind of answered this question about how I started the YouTube channel is I just wanted to do what I'd previously done with people watching me play games and me, you know, talking to them about it. But with horror as the main focus, that is new, so I'm going to answer that. So, I started my channel playing Okami HD, which is, it was, Okami was one of my favorite games, Okami HD had just come out, and I was like, well, I'm gonna make videos about that, and I did, and that series, it was really good for me, I liked it, but at the same time, I used face cam, and Okami HD is like a beautiful game, and I shouldn't have done that, and uh, so I took that off the channel. Even though it was like a playthrough that was really close to my heart, I took it off the channel and then I started doing another playthrough for Knit Underground, but that was just something I was like, oh, it's a new game that just came out and I'm going to jump right on that and jump on the train. And that was like a walkthrough game where I actually did like 100% walkthrough because at the time people didn't know where anything was in that game and they were looking at my videos. So I ended up doing like a walkthrough for that game. Uh, so th it, that's how the roots of the channel. And then after that, I was like, well, you know what? I've always loved horror, so maybe I should start playing horror. And when I was thinking about a horror game to play, I was thinking about... I had played much of the Fatal Frame series, uh, but number four was never released here. And I saw that it was in English, and I was like, oh my god, there's an English patch for this game? I'm totally going to play this as, like, a uh, first horror game on my channel. And at the time, I wasn't even planning on changing my uh, channel to a horror channel as the main focus. It was just a horror game that was on the channel. But that playthrough was really fun for me to do and I found that's when Benson first came in and I found that I was just having like a really good time playing this and I was really comfortable giving commentary and I just when I was editing the videos I was like wow this is like it's fun to watch this you know and so that's when I started realizing that maybe I should play more horror games and that kind of changed into me just keep going on playing more and more and more and more horror I played all the Fatal Frame series I was doing indie horror games and I was still doing other games at the time I did like Devil May Cry which I deleted the playthrough of because there's so much copyright stuff involved with that and uh yeah I did like The Last of Us and then from then on it was just horror and uh I really like doing that and I sometimes mix it up sometimes play some other stuff just some one-shot games but it's mostly horror yeah and so that's how it just kind of slowly progressed and changed into horror and now here I am and I'm mainly a horror channel and I love doing what I do. Anyways guys, I'm gonna end the video here. I really hope you enjoyed. Now I didn't make this as entertaining as I could have. I just kind of wanted to give you guys some very truthful answers of uh, things about my life, things about me, uh, things about plans for the channel and whatnot so that you guys would get to know me a little bit more. That's the main focus of this thing. It was less about me being my goofy self and me just being a uh, truthful and very honest about these questions. There were a couple times I was a little goofy though. Oops! But I hope you liked it anyways! So, I'm, you know what? As this video has been going on, my voice has progressively get, been getting worse because I've been doing a lot of talking and I've my cold is still lingering on a little bit. Like, if I talk a lot, it, it kind of slowly comes back, which sucks because I'm a teacher and I gotta teach stuff. Ugh. But, uh, yeah, uh, it's... My voice probably sounds a lot worse than it was when I started the video. So, uh, sorry about that. But, uh, hey, I lasted until now. Points for that, huh? Points for that. And also, like, the lighting was okay, but it slowly progressively changed to nighttime, and now it's, like, way darker than it was. <laughs> oh, God, this video is crazy. It's crazy! But, uh, yeah. I'll see you guys in future videos on the channel, and as always, guys, peace.